Hello beautiful people and welcome to my crocheted bloomers video. So I had brought out my sketchbook and I sketched out these adorable bloomer designs and I was instantly obsessed and I had to figure it out and it was my mission for like three four days to figure this out and I frogged so many of them and I finally came up with a pattern that worked really really well and I'm so excited to share it. I know this video is like pretty long but trust me you guys are going to absolutely love the end result and you're gonna look so cute so let's get into the video um millie first she wanted to uh sketch in my sketchbook so that's what this is but anyway enjoy the video this is the first pair of successful bloomers that i made there were three before her and i had to frog all of them because they just didn't work for one reason or the other but i finally got it to work and we are going to make it together. It's going to be super fun. I'm so excited to make another pair because I have another really cute colorway that I'm going to make them in. So let's go make another pair together. First, of course, you're going to need yarn. I'll let you know on screen how much yarn that I use. And you're going to need scissors, crochet hook, tapestry needle, and you might also need a measuring tape. So I would grab one of those just in case. Here I have a five millimeter hook because that is what my yarn tells me I need to use. So this is the yarn that I'm using, super soft, super fuzzy. I think it's gonna be really cute. And I'm gonna use this purple for the waistband and then this creamy fuzzy color for the rest of the bloomers. You're going to start off by making the waistband. So we're going to make a slip knot. And now you are going to chain 11. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So eleven is basically just the extra one because we want ten, but eleven is just that extra one because we don't go into the first stitch. So you're going to yarn over, go into that 10th chain, and make a half double crochet. Okay, so now you're gonna go into the next one and make another half double crochet. So we now have one, two after this. Yarn over, another half double crochet in the next. Three. Four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So now we have 10 stitches in this row, which is what we want, and we're just going to keep building up upon this. And the thing is with crochet is that it very much stretches. So while you're making this, you're going to want to measure your waistband up to your waist and around your waist. But to keep in account that crochet stretches much more over time even as it does when you first put it on. Like for example, I made 59 stitches in my first pair of bloomers and it was way too big because I, I put it around my waist and it was a little bit smaller than my waist so I was like okay then I think I'm good but it was once once over time like I started putting it on it started stretching out so you're going to want to make inches less than your waist size so I'll show you what I mean once we have more built up of the waistband but now what you're gonna do is you're gonna chain one and this is row one so you're going to want to have your phone or a notebook or something out to keep track of your rows no matter if you're beginner or advanced in my opinion it's just very helpful to know how many rows so you can duplicate it or you know because I use this waistband technique on a lot of different projects so if you know that you know 65 rows or you know 77 rows is perfect for your waist 
then you can just keep duplicating that every time. So I would recommend you to, if this is your first time doing it, to keep track of your amount of rows. So then if it's perfect, you can duplicate it. If it's not perfect, if it's too, too small, you can make less, you know, and so on. So I chained one. Now I'm going to turn my work. And we are going to work in the back loops only now. As you can see in my first one, this is an example of what the waistband will look like. Um, we're going, of course, this way instead of this way, but this is what we're doing. So we're basically going in the back loops only for one row and then turning it, doing the back loops only, turning back loops only, just so it has this really cool, I don't know if it's like a knit style, but that is what we're doing at the moment. So we have our work turned, we're on row two, and we are going to yarn over. If you turn it, you can see these V stitches better. So I'm going to go right into the first stitch, into the back loop, yarn over, pull through three. That's our first one. So one, two, three, four, Six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Now we have row two. So now we're going to chain one, turn our work and work on row three. Yarn over, back loops only in the first stitch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, chain one and turn your work. We'll do one more row together. So yarn over, back loops only in that first stitch, in the second stitch, and just keep going all the way down the row, just in the back loops only. And if you are a beginner, then I would recommend counting your stitches along. And if you have 11, that's totally fine. You can have 11, you can have 12. Um, it doesn't really matter if you have like a perfect 10. So if you have 11, it's not a problem at all. It'll just be a little bit longer than mine. And that's not a problem, but just make sure that you have 11 in every single row. Because if you have 11 in one row and 10 and 11, you know, and 11, 11, 10, 10, you know, it's going to not look straight. So just make sure that you have a consistent amount for every single row. So now I'm just going to keep going. I have four rows right now and I'm going to continue until I have 52 rows. So you guys keep going until um, you have however long you want your waistband to be. Just keep trying it on, make sure that it fits you very nicely. So I'm just going to keep going until I have 52 rows and I'll see you in a second. Okay, so now I was going to do 52 rows, but this yarn is, I believe, a little bit chunkier than my previous yarn that I used. So I actually did 48 rows, and I still think it might be a little big, but we're going to end up making a drawstring anyway, so it doesn't really matter. I like usually making things bigger so I can, like, I don't like things tight. I just, I hate tight clothes, so I would rather it be on the bigger side. But anyway, this is my waistband, and this is what it's going to look like. We're going to slip stitch it together in just a second. So now what you're going to do is you're going, your yarn is still attached. You did a chain one. Your yarn is still attached, so you're just going to take the end and bring it up right here, fold it right in half. So now we are going to bring the two together like this, 
and we are just going to slip stitch to close the waistband. And it doesn't really matter if you like have them in the exact same stitches, just as long as it's fairly lined up. So we're just going to put it in any stitch. Basically, it doesn't like truly matter if it's like in the same one like it does with some patterns. So I'm just gonna start slip stitching the two together. So you just poke your yarn in through one side and then the other side, grab your yarn and pull through that loop on the hook and just keep going, making sure you're getting them on both sides. So there we go, we slip stitched there. And now we are going to be working on now we're gonna be working this way so we're gonna be working around the waistband to make our bloomers but we are going to bring in our cream color so I'm just going to grab it from the middle I always like grabbing my yarn from the middle and I'm going to cut my purple yarn so we don't need it anymore and instead of doing that final chain one, sorry, we're going to actually bring in our cream yarn. So we're going to grab the end of our cream yarn, drape it over the hook and just attach the cream yarn to the hook instead of doing the chain one with the purple. And you want to tie it relatively tight together. Okay, so now we're going to turn inside out and we are going to be working now on the frillies, which is now coming in the little bit more trickier part, but it just took me a while to get it because I was figuring out the pattern. But now that I know what to do, I can explain it better and explain it easier. So it'll probably not be too difficult. Okay, so now that we have this, I have my chain one. And now what we're going to do is we're going to work around the circumference of the waistband by doing an increase in every stitch. So now it's kind of hard to see, but it doesn't truly matter like which one exactly that you put it into because it's a little tricky to find but you can kind of see how there's a stitch that uh, you can put uh, your increases in here and here and here it's just the first row for the waistband is always trickier but going on from there it's super easy and I'll show you what I mean but what we're going to do is we are going to do an increase in every single stitch around so it's nice and ruffly like with this one we're gonna make two stitches in every stitch and that's what an increase is. So basically, we're going to go to our first one. We're doing half double crochets. So you're gonna yarn over. In the first available stitch, you're going to do one half double crochet. And in the same exact stitch, you're gonna do another one. And that is your increase. And then we have our next stitch that we're gonna go into. And then we put two in it, so we have two and two. Our next available stitch is right here. And we're gonna put two half double crochets into it. Our next stitch is right there. So kind of just whatever ones you see available. And then our next one. So just keep going and putting two stitches in every stitch, which is an increase, all the way around the waistband, two half double crochets in every stitch so we can make that ruffle. We're gonna be doing this quite a bit in this pattern by putting two half double crochets in every stitch because the ruffles are just what makes the bloomers bloomers. <laughs> Okay. 
Oh my gosh, this is what we have so far. I'm literally, I cannot. It's so cute. I'm obsessed. Okay. Okay, so I'm just going to keep going all the way around, doing my increase in every single stitch. And then I'll see you once we get to the end and I'll show you how I end it, um, how I end the row. Okay, so now I just did my last stitch. Sorry, I'm gonna move all these things out of the way. So now I just did my last stitch and now I'm going to slip stitch into the first half double crochet of the row. Okay, so now I'm going to chain one. So now after I chained one, I'm going to turn my work and now what we're going to do is put one half double crochet in every stitch going all the way around so now it's easier now because you just put it right underneath those two v stitches so it's much easier than the previous row going forward so you just put in one half double crochet in every stitch of this row Okay, so I reached the last stitch of this row, and now I'm just going to slip stitch again in the top of the first half double crochet of this same row. And this is what we have so far. She's so cute. And now we're gonna chain one and turn our work. And now we're going to repeat the previous row by doing one half double crochet again in every single stitch around and then again we reached the end so now we're going to slip stitch into that first half double crochet chain one turn our work and now we're going to be doing something different we are going to be doing half double crochets in the front loops only one half double crochet in every stitch all the way around, but only in the front loops. And why that is, is because once this row of ruffles is finished in two more rows after this one, there's gonna be six all together. And once that's done, we're going to cut our yarn and insert our yarn, I'm gonna show you See here how we're building this little row for ourselves later on? This is going to be the row that we insert to make our next row of ruffles. But for now, just continue with the half double crochets all the way around in the front loops only. So you see how we have the two loops, the two V stitches? You know how we did with the waistband, we put it in the back loops only? Well, you're just going to grab that front V stitch rather than the back. All the way around this row. And then our next row, row um, five, is going to be normal, just how we do the one half double crochet in every stitch. chain one, turn your work, and there's what we have so far. And now we're just going to do a normal row of half double crochets in every stitch all the way around. Last stitch of the fifth row, and then of course we're going to slip stitch in our first half double crochet. 
chain one, turn work, and now we are going to do our last one of this row. So this is our final row. We're doing the same exact thing that we've been doing for most of the rows. Um, we are doing one half double crochet in every stitch all the way around. So this is our sixth row. And again, we're just doing one single half double crochet in every stitch around. So now I'm just going to cut my yarn. Oops, that was way too long. That's okay. <laughs> okay, so now we have our first row completed. So now what we're going to do is we are going to attach our yarn to that spot where we have the back loops only right here. Okay, so we're gonna turn it inside out and right here where we have our seam, we're going to attach our yarn. So our seam is right back here. So now I'm just going to insert my hook, pull through my yarn, and tie it. Just going to double knot my yarn right there where I have the front loops only row and we're going to now be working in those back loops to make the tier so I'm just gonna pull my yarn and chain one like always and now I'm going to work in those loops so I just fold it over just so it makes it a little easier to see and I'm going to put one half double crochet in every single one of those all the way around So basically we're just building up our tiers. See, so yeah, I just keep folding over this part just so it's a little easier to grab a hold of that loop so now i'm just slip stitching into that last now I just slip stitched into that first half double crochet like we did for the previous row here. Now I'm just going to chain one like we've been doing, turn my work, and now I'm going to be doing just a normal row of half double crochets in every stitch all the way around. So row one we just completed, which we did one half double crochet in those back loops. And now we're just doing for row two, one half double crochet in every stitch all the way around. And then row three, we're going to repeat row two and do one half double crochet all the way around. So once you get to the end, you're going to slip stitch into the top of the first half double crochet, chain one, turn work, and then do one half double crochet in every stitch all the way around. So for rows two and three, you're going to do the exact same thing. And then we'll meet back up for row four because it is the same as the previous row four, 
with the um, half double crochets in the front loop only, but we will go ahead and do a little bit of that one together. But for now, you can go ahead and finish rows two and three, and then we'll, we'll meet back up to do row four together. Okay, so now I finished row three, chained one, turn my work, and now I'm going to do for row four, one half double crochet in each stitch in the front loops only. So we can build up another tier um, after we're done with row six. We're gonna do the same thing that we did in the first tier, and now we're in the second tier, so we're just doing, um, in row four, we are doing one half double crochet in every stitch around in the front loops only. So as you can see, so as you can see, we're building that up. So we can, again, like we did with this tier, we can bring in our color after this one is done to make our third tier. So then the same thing, we're just going all the way around and doing one half double crochet in that front loop. And once you're done with this one, we will meet back for row five. Okay, so now that I'm done with row five, as you can see, this next tier doesn't really have much of a ruffle. And I'm going to fix that by increasing in every single stitch all the way around so I can get that ruffle like I have with this one. So basically going forward to get the ruffle, um, I increase in the row six. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to slip stitch like usual, chain one, Turn my work and now for row six we are going to increase in every single stitch by putting one two half double crochets in every stitch all the way around so we can get that last row nice and ruffly so just put two half double crochets in every stitch all the way around and then tier two is complete. Now that we've completed tier two, what you're gonna do for tier three is completely replicate tier two. So you can go ahead and rewind if you want to watch how to do tier two again but just completely copy the same exact thing. And then we will meet back once tier three is done and we will work on the crotch part of the shorts. I am absolutely obsessed with how it's looking so far. I'm gonna have to go out and buy more yarn because I only bought two of these and I'm definitely going to need a third because I'm already out of the first one. So I'm gonna have to go out and grab some more. Okay, so just repeat tier two for tier three, and I'll see you back for tier number four. So now we have one, two, three tiers done, and now we just need to uh, work on the crotch area. So we're going to do like how we've been doing and just attach our yarn um, to the seam right here where we have the back loops only row. So we're gonna do that and we're gonna start off by doing it the same that we've been doing it for the past three tiers. So just attach your yarn to the back loops only spot. And then we're just going to do like normal one half double crochet in every single one of those back loops only. And we're going to do that all the way around just the same like we've been doing. The first three rows are, uh, the first, I think, 
I don't know, the first three rows, I think, four rows maybe. I have it all written in my notes app. Like, I was taking major notes when I was making these, and then I was deleting so much because I was like, well, that doesn't work. And so, yeah, it was quite the trial and error getting this part to work. This tier was the hardest for me to figure out, but I figured it out. It took me a couple days, but I, I got it figured out for you guys. So, just do the regular... Uh, row that we've been doing and I can't wait to see you guys with your little frilly bums <laughs> so basically the mission for this tier is to turn it into shorts make it into two separate legs so that's just what we're working towards right now um, so just keep going putting um, one half double crochet in every single stitch all the way around in that back loop and then I will meet up with you after we're done with this row. I am sorry, I sound very sick because I am sick, so I may sound a little bit funky because my nose is very stuffy, but bear with me. <laughs> I am also very sniffly, but I am editing all of that out so you don't have to constantly hear it. <laughs> All right, for rows two and three, we're just gonna do the same thing, but go ahead and do rows two and three, which is the um, one half double crochet in every single stitch all the way around. And also don't forget to slip stitch into the first half double crochet, chain one, turn your work um, after you're done with this row two. Um, never forget to do that after every single row. So just keep working on rows two and three and I will see you for row four. There's only one left. Hopefully it's enough. So now I just finished row three and what you're going to want to do is try this on and make sure that it covers your crotch. Like if you want it to be more high-waisted, then you should probably add another tier at this point, but I want mine to be more lower waisted but since i want mine low waisted this is a good length for me but make sure you try yours on and however like if you want it high or low waisted just make sure that at this point it covers the crotch because that's what we're going to be working on right now is the crotch so if it doesn't work then it's going to be way too tight and not good so now what we're going to do this is now row four so we slip stitched and now we're going to chain one and turn our work and now what we're going to do is we are going to take our piece and fold it in half. You can also grab a measuring tape. This is the middle right here. You can grab a measuring tape to make sure everything's even on both sides, but I'm just going to fold it all in half. Actually first, sorry, I gotta make sure all the ruffles are nice and flat. So just flatten out the ruffles and then fold it in half. What we're going to do right now is we're going to chain a certain amount and it's going to be the crotch area to make two separate pant legs, uh, shorts legs for these bloomers. And I think that everyone's chaining amount, it might be different. I'm going to chain eight. If you need yours to be bigger or smaller, I would recommend you trying it on just to see. So I know that for me, chain eight is perfect. Um, but if you need more, you just go ahead and do more. If you need less, go ahead and do less. So, okay. So I actually got rid of my chain one. Sorry. You want to get rid of your chain one. You want to just make sure you have it slip stitched. Sorry about that. I'm just so used to chaining one and, and turning. Um, but you just want to make sure you have your slip stitch, not your chain one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to chain eight. One two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And what that is going to be is this part of the pants. So now what you're going to do is you're gonna take this chain eight, make sure everything's nice and sitting even. And directly on the other side, you are going to slip stitch this chain eight right into the other side. So I'm just gonna slip stitch you can measure it, of course, so yours is like perfect. Okay, so there we go. 
And now we have our two separate legs and this is the crotch area that we're gonna be working into. Okay, so now this is our row four, which usually our row four is us uh, half double crocheting in the front loops only. And that is what we're going to do for this one, but it's going to be a little bit different. So I'm going to chain one, turn my work, and we're going to be working in this area right here. Okay, so now we're going to pick, see how we have the V stitches right here. We're gonna turn it slightly and just use the top one. Like we're going in the back loops and like we're going in the front loops only basically, just in pick one of the loops to go into. It's a little hard to see. Okay, so now you're just picking the front loops basically of just the chaining and you wanna count them. So one, two, three, four, five, eight. So basically what we did was we just did a half double crochet in just the top and then we are going to continue doing half double crochets in the front loop only. And as you can see there, if we went here, there would be a little bit of a gap. So there's kind of like a, a little stitch right here and I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna use it. Um, it's not technically a real stitch, I don't think, but I don't want any gaps. See, there would be a big gap if that stitch wasn't there and I don't want any gaps. So I'm just gonna put a stitch there. And now I'm just gonna continue along this row like we always do except now we are working in a smaller circle rather than you know, the big circle. So we're gonna work in two smaller circles making the leg holes right now. So just put one half double crochet in every front loop all the way around this leg for row four. So now I just slip stitched into the first stitch of that row, chain one, turn my work. And now, as you can see, we're just going to be working in all of these V stitches all the way around doing row five, which is of course, one half double crochet in every stitch all the way around. We're just, of course, slip stitching into the top, chain one, turn work. And now we're on row six, which is, of course, the um, half double crochets in every stitch all the way around. So the increase um, row, of course, that we've always been doing. So let's go ahead and get started on that one. And then this tier will be completed. But I just wanted to mention again, if you wanted your bloomers to be high waisted, I, I would highly recommend you just adding another tier. So how I, just another normal tier, like the one before we did the, the, this tier that I'm working on, just do another one of those. And if you want it a little more lower waisted like me, then maybe just do the same thing that I did. And then of course, try it on with that, this middle part, just to make sure that it fits you nicely and then it's not too tight. That would be super uncomfortable. And we do not want uncomfortable clothes around here. We want pure comfort. So just make sure to try things on as you go. Make sure it all fits nicely. Um, try the length on before you do the crotch. And if you're like, okay, I think I need to add another tier, go ahead and add another tier. It's super easy to do, and if it's more comfortable and it fits you better, then go for it. Now 
Now I'm just, of course, slip stitching, chaining one, cutting my yarn. And that is the end of this tier for this leg. Now I'm just gonna take a quick second to explain um, what we're gonna do next. So as you can see, this is where we did our half double crochets in the front loops only. So now we have these back loops to work into. And as you can see, we have this awkward space that we have to, of course, keep going. So as you can see, there's a stitch right here. We're going to use that one to keep going all the way around. So that's what we're going to do on this side for this tier. So this leg is pretty much all taken care of, easy, simple. We got that figured out. So now we have another leg. And the problem is, is that we have to um, then again, of course, when we do the tier on this side, we have to use... Um, one of these stitches as well. So two of these stitches are taken and then one of the stitches, of course, there's three in the chain and we already took one and then we're gonna take two for the tiers. So now we have to work on this leg and for this other leg we attached, remember how we went first into just one of the loops, but two of these loops are gonna be taken by the tiers. So we're just gonna leave these two. And then what we're going to do for the ones that we're doing the front loops only, um, around like we did for the fourth row for this one. For the fourth row for this one, we're gonna do the same thing, but the problem is, is that all the stitches are technically reserved. So I don't know if this is the best way to do it, but I think that based on trying it a few times, I think this is just the best way of doing it, is that for that stitch that we did for this row, the fourth row into the uh, front loops only, we're gonna share that stitch for this row. So I'll show you what I'm talking about in a second. So I'm just going to attach my yarn right adjacent to the other side where we attached our yarn. Chain one. And then where we have this first row here, which is hard to see, but it's right here. With these stitches here. We are going to share that stitch that they went into. So if we pull it apart, so you can kind of see all three stitches and then the one that this one's on, but of course we're going to try and share with this one right here. I don't truly see another way, but what you wanna do for sure though, is to make sure that you count them so that there's eight or you know 10 or how many ever you have um, just count them make sure that there's that many if you're off by one it's really not going to be a big deal but just make sure that you have you know relatively the same amount going across so I'm just going to do that all the way across count my stitches we've got two so I'm just sharing it with that with that first one that we did over there just so we can reserve those two for the two tiers that we need. And if you need to pull it apart to see it a little better, see it's right there, that's totally fine too. Now I'm just continuing going, but for this row, the difference is, is that we're going to be working in the back loops only. Because as you, and I'll show you why, because as you can see here, for this leg, we have, of course, our uh, front loops only row and how it can connect all the way to this crotch area. And now that we have this row, it's very small, but it's getting there. Um, we don't wanna do it in the front loops only because if we did, then the tier would be working towards the outside and we don't want that. So we're going to do the back loops only so we can have the front loop available for us to, um, of course, as you can see, continue going, let me just fold this over, um, continue going all the way around. So this is the row that we're going to do the back loops only, so we can use that front tier. And if you get kind of confused, like, oh wait, which one do I do the back loops only? Which one do I do the front loops only? Basically just look and you always want loops to be on the inside. You always want the loops to be on the inside. So if yours is like, oh wait, but mine works with the front loops only. For some reason, just make sure always that you have some kind of loop on the inside 
um, for when you're doing your tiers. So for me right now, what's working, I might be turned around a little bit and that's okay. It doesn't truly matter as long as you have just that loop to work into. So if you're like, uh, mine works just fine with the front loops only. But if yours is working totally fine by continuing going in the front loops only, that is totally good. Um, whatever works, um, just as long as you have something to work your tear into on the inside. It truly doesn't matter um, as long as you have that. I'm just done my last stitch, so now I am slip stitching to connect them together. Now I'm chaining one and turning my work. And now, of course, we have the normal old row five that we're just gonna do here. And we're going to put one half double crochet in every stitch around for row five, as we did with the other leg. And now just make sure that once you reach this spot that you don't get like confused and start stitching on there, just make sure that you are continuing with your row here and not getting anything confused. Just keep everything nice and lined up. Okay. And now I just finished off with my last stitch and I'm going to slip stitch into the first half double crochet of the first of that previous row, chain one, turn my work, and now I'm going to do row six, which is of course, as we all know, the increase in every stitch, which is two half double crochets in every stitch all the way around. And then of course, once this row is done, we can cut our yarn and we can work on the ruffles for the legs. The legs aren't that difficult. I just add two tiers for the legs, but you can of course add literally as many as you want. You could make this a full set of pants if you wanted to. Um, I just like the shorts. I think they're really cute, but I had a sketch design that I was going to make a full set of pants. But then a couple days later, I sketched out this design and I really liked it a lot better. And I was like, okay, I gotta try that one. So I did and it took me a little bit to get it all, of course, but I eventually um, got it. All right, as you can see, we have this area done so now it is pants and that's awesome so now we just have to work on getting that inner tiers done and then we have to make um, i'm going to make two more tiers you can make as many of course as you want i'm just going to take a quick look at this with you guys just to explain what we're going to do next so now we're going to add the next tier so as you can see we have the loops to work into like usual but then of course we have this awkward space that we didn't usually have. So we're going to, of course, pick one of these loops, remember how they were reserved. So we're going to pick one of those two to work into on this side, um, probably this one, and then we're going to keep going all the way around for the tier. So that's how we connect it together with the tier. And then on this side, we're going to do the same thing with these loops going all the way around and then we will use these loops to keep connecting the tier. So there might be like some awkwardness like right here. So you're gonna wanna probably figure out a place that you can add a stitch just so there's no gaps and that's totally fine. It's not like against the law or anything to add a stitch. So if you have to add one so there's not like an awkward gap, then that's totally fine. So we're gonna go ahead and work one of the legs together and then you guys can do the other leg on your own, just like rewatch the previous footage for this leg. So we're gonna work on this one and then of course we're gonna work on this one. Um, I'm gonna work on it off camera. So we'll work on this one together and hopefully it'll all make sense once we get started. <laughs> okay, so we have our wonky part right here and now we're just going to the stitch before that part. We're just going to insert our hook and add in our yarn like we have been doing. Chain one. 
and I'm going to turn my work. And then I'm just going to do the same thing by doing one half double crochet in all of these loops here. So now I'm just going to sneak one in here because I don't want, again, that awkward space. So I'm just going to sneak one stitch, half double crochet in. Okay. So now we have the crotch area. So we're just going to kind of fold it like this. So we can see we have underneath, we have that first initial chain. So we're going to pick one of those and start half double crocheting in it to work on the tier for this row. And now I'm just going to find a space where I can add another one because I don't want any awkward holes. And then I'm just going to slip stitch, of course, into that first one. So let's just look, take a look. So there we have our tier. I know everything is looking a little confusing at the moment but it will be a lot less confusing in a minute. Once we have more length, um, things will be less confusing. So I'm going to chain one, turn, and then I'm going to do rows two and three. There, of course, um, one half double crochet and every stitch all the way around. So I'm going to do rows two and three, and it'll look um, a lot more it'll look a lot less confusing um, once you have more length to this tier but right now it just looks like so many things and it's just really confusing so once you get done with this tier things should look uh look a lot better so i'm just going to finish row two then do row three and then we'll meet back for row four i chained one and turned my work and now i am working my fourth row um, doing one half double crochet in the back loops only and how you can make sure that this is the inside is you know you look for your seams and my seam is right here on the inside so you know that that we're in the correct spot and now I'm just going to do for the fourth row I'm going to do one half double crochet in the back loops only so we can have that front loop be reserved for the next tier. And I am hoping I have enough yarn. I'm really worried, but I don't know if I'm gonna have enough, which means I have to wait a couple days because they don't restock their yarn, um, like their truck comes in in like a couple days. Um, and which means I have to wait, which I really don't wanna have to do. So I hope I have enough so I can get this tutorial out for you guys as soon as possible. I'm just going to finish this row of uh, half double crochets in the back loops only. And then I'm going to do row five, which is the normal half double crochet in every stitch. And then of course the sixth row is going to be an increase in every stitch or two half double crochets in every stitch. And we will meet up once four, five, and six are done. Okay, so we've added another tier and now I think we're gonna go over to this side and work on this tier just so I can show you guys how to do it and then I'll let you guys add as many more tiers as you want to, but why don't we just go through this one on the other side together just in case you have like any questions or need to know how to do it. So let's go do that one together. Okay, so first of all, we just have to find our spot where we did these loops, okay. So there we go. And now we will insert our hook. I believe this is the first one. So now I'm just going to chain one, turn my work. I don't really need to go through this part with you because you guys know how to do this part by now, I'm sure. Just doing this row is the half double crochets in these loops. 
and then I'll meet up with you once we get to this tricky part. Okay, so I've reached this part, and now you can see, let me just pull it, on the other side are, this side anyway, is attached right in here. So we're just going to open this up a little bit to see better. So it's attached right in here. So as you can see, we have some stitches that we're able to work into. It's just a little bit difficult to see, but I'm sure you'll be able to see probably on your own piece much better than you can see on mine. So I'm just turning it so you guys can see it a little bit better. I added this stitch in because there was kind of an awkward gap, but as you can see, I'm just going to pick that random loop there that we have. So let, I'm just gonna count them to make sure that I have a good amount, one, two, three, that I have like around eight. One, two, three, four, five, eight. And then we're going to put one right there just so we don't have such a huge, like awkward gap in between these two. And then I'm going to slip stitch, chain one, turn my work and then I'm going to do my half double crochets for row two right on top of those previous half double crochets like we've been doing for many rows now I'm just going to show you guys real quick. As you can see, these two right here are the ruffles for the previous row. And now these are the bottom tiers. And this one right here is the one that we're working on right now. And it's basically a duplicate of this one that we just, that we just did just now. So that's what we're doing. And I know that this was all like kind of tricky to see, but honestly, just as long as it's attached, not bulky, it's totally fine. So I'm just finishing up, I'm just gonna, I'm actually just starting, but I'm just gonna finish up rows two and three, and then of course we're gonna meet back for row four, four again, and I will see you in a second. Now we're on our fourth row, and we're going to do the half double crochets in the back loops only again, like we did in the other one on the other side. And then we are going to do row five as normal and then row six as our increase. So you can go ahead and complete, complete rows four, five, and six. And then I will see you once you're done with that. This is what we have so far with one, two, three, four, five tiers. And oh my goodness, you guys, how cute are these? Like the ruffles and how soft i just i'm obsessed i could not be happy with how these are turning out i don't know if i have enough yarn to complete both sides of the tiers i think i might have to wait a couple days for them to get their next load of yarn in but i am actually going to go ahead and do those two um, so you guys can go ahead and make how many tiers you want to do. You could stop right here. You could make a few more. You could make a ton more. You can make however many you'd like. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and make two more. And I will see you guys in a second once I'm done with all of that. And they're all completed. And then we will work on weaving in these very many ends. So... I'm obsessed. I'm I'm going to go try them on right now and see how they look, but I am so excited. I mean, you guys got to try yours on too so you can just get so excited about how cute they are. But um, I'll see you in just a sec and then we will um, continue on. I ended up being way too impatient to wait, so we had to drive to Madison to get the yarn that I needed because I am impatient as can be. But look at how beautiful the sunset was and then it was like a really cool, hugely bright moon as well on our way home and it was just a really fun adventure. And here are the finished bloomers. I think that, oh my gosh, I just can't even, I literally can't get over them. Okay, so I'm just going to say a couple things. 
Um, if you need a waistband because yours is a little too loose, you can easily um, sew in a waistband. Also, from the thrift store, remember I showed you, I picked up these ribbons. You could easily use a ribbon, but now that I'm looking at it, I feel like this ribbon is a little too thin to use for a waistband, but I'm not quite sure. I have not had much experience using ribbon as a waistband, but I feel like which one? this one is like seriously a perfect match. So I might try to use this one. All you'd have to do is just weave it in um, in between the um, in between the waistband here and then of course have the tie in the front um, but yeah I got these for 50 cents each at the thrift store and I thought that was a really good deal so I can use them for lots of other projects but yeah definitely check out the thrift store for like just some funky yarns and ribbons and stuff they have them for really affordable and I feel like ribbon is kind of expensive <laughs> I think the ribbon would be so cute as uh as a tie here instead of like otherwise you could just make one out of yarn but i feel like the ribbon just like kind of just makes that bloomer's aesthetic like even more whimsical and i think that would be really fun so if you want to go get some ribbon i feel like maybe a thicker ribbon would probably be a better bet i might go out and buy a thicker ribbon just to try it out because i think that that would kind of just I think this is too thin but anyway here is the final bloomers and we did it we made them i figured it out and we did it together thank you again for watching i'm gonna go ahead and try these on so you guys can see them on me and i just hope you have the most beautiful and blessed and fabulous day and thank you again for all the love of my crochet tutorials if you want to see any other types of crochet tutorials just let me know anything that you want to see me try all in all it took me like four and a half hours to create the whole entire to make the whole entire thing and it took a hundred three and a half rolls of yarn and they were 180 yards each I made sure to keep track because some of you in the comments were like you have to start telling us how much yarn you use and a lot of times I just use like just what I have in my stash and I sometimes don't have like the labels on them so I don't know how much um but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you really enjoyed this video. I'm going to go ahead and try them on so you guys can see me in them. And I will see you in the next video. Bye. Here's what they look like on. Oh my gosh. Could they be cuter? I just, I love them. Definitely need to figure out a waistband situation. I'm going to go get some ribbon and get a waistband because they're, they're a little bit too big because they stretch, the, the yarn stretches so much, so... Yeah, anyway, I'm gonna have to go get some ribbon because she be slipping and we don't want any malfunctions. But yeah, these are adorable. I'm actually weaving in this ribbon because it was just way too big on me and it was like falling off as I was taking the picture. So I just decided that I would use this ribbon and show you guys how I'm doing it. So basically I'm just going in here and then skipping this part and going back through on the other side. Okay, so now I'm going to tighten them. Definitely would be better with a thicker ribbon but I love the idea of using ribbon. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. Okay, so now I'm just going to cut it. I feel like maybe right here. Careful not to cut my hair, oh my gosh, can you imagine? <laughs> okay, that is what it looks like with the ribbon and I think it elevates it I, I, I love it with the ribbon. That's so cute. Okay, I think it definitely, it definitely elevates them. I like it better with the ribbon. I'm so glad I did it. Okay, so these are them all finished and I hope you guys make these because I would absolutely love to see you guys walking around with little ruffled bums. <laughs> okay, so I hope you guys have the best day. I love you guys. Bye.